Welcome back to another episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On this week's episode, we're going to talk all about Jeweled Lacerta Care. Stick around. In a nutshell, the Jeweled Lacerta is a medium-sized diurnal lizard from Western Europe and the Mediterranean. So you'll find these guys in parts of Spain, maybe Greece, uh, more of a temperate climate, somewhere where it's going to be warm most of the year. These guys get to about 24 feet, or 24 feet, 24 inches long. A uh, 24 foot lizard would be rather impressive. These guys, about uh, 15 to 24 inches. Males get a little bit bigger than females, um, as is the case with several different types of lizards. And the males, you can tell, are males because they have these giant heads in comparison to the females. You can definitely tell looking one uh, beside the other which is which. I'd love to show you comparison but I've only got a male. This is Bob here. Bob is a, I think he's about five years old. Uh, I got him from, I'm the third owner of Bob. Bob has metabolic bone disease which means he's got an issue with his bones. Uh, likely the owners before me didn't provide the proper amount of UVB light and maybe calcium as well, different supplements. Uh, it just means that his bones aren't getting enough UVB and the calcium can't synthesize properly. Maybe there's a better word than synthesize. His body's not using calcium properly because of the light that he was not getting. Now, Bob here, just using him as an example, uh, he's living a happy, healthy life. If you can see in his enclosure here, he's got um, a 24 inch UVB bulb and then he's got a basking bulb as well to keep the temperatures perfect. And a perfect temperature for a Jewel Lacerta, you want the cool end to be in the high 70s. Right now I think he's around 77 degrees in the cool side of his enclosure now. And then the high end, uh, you want in the high 80s basking spot in the mid 90s. Like I said, these guys are from Central Europe, Western Europe actually. So they're from a place where it's going to be rather warm most of the time. Now I keep Bob outside during the summer months and I made a custom enclosure. We're going to go over custom enclosures. Once it stops being uh, freezing and the Arctic has ceased in southern Ontario here, but for the winter time, he lives in a custom made enclosure that I made out of melamine. It's 18 inches deep, 18 inches tall, and 48 inches long. So it's the equivalent of about a 70 gallon aquarium, um, but four feet is a good amount of space for one Jewel Lacerda. At minimum, I would say 40 gallons. If you want a Jewel Lacerda, one of them, 40 gallons if you want to, you need something a little bit bigger than that. I mean a good rule of thumb is to add half of what's good for one for every additional one. Uh, in terms of cohabitation, I, I know people who have had males and females together. Of course they will breed likely, uh, but having several females together generally shouldn't be a problem. Um, having males together is a, a no-no, you don't want to do that. Uh, unless of course you run a Lacerta fighting ring. Uh, but unless you're Michael Vick, probably not a good idea to keep two male Lacertas together. They're going to fight. Uh, they're going to kill each other. It's going to be bad. So, um, I would suggest keeping your jeweled Lacertas single. Keep them by themselves. Just to go back to the light there for a second. Uh, with the basking bulb, I just use a regular 40 watt basking bulb from the dollar store. Uh, you can use 50 watt or 75 watt, 100 watt, whatever it is. It depends how high. Uh, the, the light is off of the surface, right, where you want the, the hot spot to be. So I use a 40 watt from the dollar store because two reasons. One, they're $2.50, so when they break, they well, burn out is what I mean to say. They don't shatter or anything. It's not a big deal. Um, I don't need them to provide UVB light because that's what the UVB strip is for. I do buy those at reptile stores or reptile expos where you're supposed to buy them. And also, to go to a reptile store and buy a 50 watt bulb, which is going to cost 10 bucks or 11 bucks it just doesn't make any sense they're gonna burn out they do the exact same job save yourself some money go to the dollar store and buy a halogen bulb 40 watts is the right uh, for an 18 inch 18 inches off of the substrate for me a 40 watt is the right place to be and that UVB light that strip uh, 5.0 that's what I do 10.0 uh, is a little bit too high I think they're not a desert species um, you want to keep it a little bit humid as well, going back and forth of where they come from. It is rather humid. There's no set range of what you should what you should uh, keep their enclosure at. Uh, you're going to read one thing on the internet, 20% uh, and another thing that says 80. So it's all over the map. What I found is I try to keep it pretty much similar with what the outside is here in Southern Ontario because we do have a similar climate in the summer to parts of Europe, the Mediterranean especially. 
So uh, we keep it around 70%, 70% on the one side of the Lacerda's enclosure. And in order to do that, what, what I would love to do, what I'm going to do in the future is have a Mist King type setup or some sort of misting type setup so I don't have to do it manually. But for now, I spray them three times a day and I have a little hydrometer in there so I know that it wavers around between 50 and 70. I try to keep it closer to 70. And then during the summertime, it sometimes gets to 80% humidity here. It gets very humid in Southern Ontario, but this will be the third year we keep Bob outside in the last two years. He's put on a bunch of weight. He seems like he's out all the time. He's more afraid of you. Something that you might not know about UV, uh, UVB light is any type of UV light we can't see, but reptiles can, which means that you're going to look completely different in a UVB light, which is why a lot of the times someone will have an iguana or um, a tagu or something like that, a larger lizard that is completely tame inside, you take them outside and then they go crazy. That's because they can see UVB light, you look something different, everything looks different. So imagine, I don't know, someone once said to me, a uh, UVB light for a lizard is as if a human took some sort of psychedelic drug. Everything looks crazy and weird like you've never seen it before. So that's a little note about UVB light. But let's get back to what you came here to watch. To keep a jewel Lacerda happy, all you need, make sure that your humidity is right. Between 50 and 70% is what I suggest. Uh, some people will say 60, 40, whatever. Just do your research. And as long as your Lacerda seems happy, no shedding problems, you're doing a great job. The light, uh, the UVB light, of course, and the temperature as well. So we went over all of that. Of course, it's a living creature. You need to make sure that they are hydrated, and the best way to do that with the Jewel Lacerda is a water bowl. Um, normally I keep a rather large water bowl that helps with the humidity. It is in the dishwasher right now, so I'm just having a little plastic sandwich container right now full of water until it's clean. And you'll notice right beside it, he's got a little cup full of superworms. We'll get back to the diet in a second. The very last thing I would suggest in terms of substrate, is something deep enough that they can dig a little bit. They do dig. Uh, they're not super known for burrowing, but they do dig. And Bob has little like T-Rex arms and he likes to dig. It's the cutest thing in the whole world. So I, I use a coconut core substrate. Sometimes a lot of people will mix it with sand so it holds a burrow, uh, but I've never noticed him to burrow. Outside, he's got a soil, sand, and coconut core mixture and it holds burrows really well. Um, my bearded dragons, when I had them, they were outside on the same thing and uh, they love to burrow through it. Bob doesn't, he just kind of digs a spot so he can hide underneath all the um, hides that I give him outside. And then for the hide on the inside of his enclosure during the winter time, he just gets one of those half logs that I bought many moons ago at whatever pet store I ended up buying it at. And that's basically it. That's all you need to keep your Jewel Deserta happy. Uh, but what do they eat? Well, they can eat a lot of different things. Some people will tell you that up to 10% of their diet is things like berries and fruit. I've never had luck getting Bob to eat either of those things. Um, I've given him mashed up bananas, mashed up berries, um, apples, all sorts of stuff. Nothing. He wants nothing to do with it. But he's very food hungry and he'll eat basically anything that crawls uh, or flies. And so he'll eat mealworms, superworms, night crawlers. Um, I fed him I fed him a mouse before. He'll eat little tiny mice. He loves those and when he was getting a little bit skinnier last year, he was we went off food for a couple of months. Um, we started him on mice again and bam, he put on a whole bunch of weight. Um, but mostly what he eats are superworms and mealworms. They're just easier. He had some crickets today. Um, and sometimes if they dig in the, the soil or the substrate, I should say, you'll get like darkling beetles, which is what mealworms turn into if you let them pupate, I think is the word. Uh, basically you evolve like a Pokemon and they become these darkling beetles and he'll eat those as well, which is fantastic. So you never have to worry about them getting lost. He'll eat them when they grow up too. So that's basically it. That is your jeweled Lacerta care in a nutshell. I would say that these are maybe an intermediate type species. As long as you keep the humidity at the right spot, you keep the temperature right, you give them the right substrate, they're going to be really happy. Feed them every couple of days and uh, they could live 12 to 20 years. That's what they say they live in captivity. I've had Bob for three years now. I think he's about five or six years old. Seems like a super happy, healthy guy. Oh, and by the way, someone made a comment last week about how I never held the Jewel Lacerda. There's a good reason for that. 
Bob bites everything that moves, including his water dish. When you go to take his water dish out, he will bite it because he thinks that it's food. If you take a hook in there to try to grab the water dish so that he doesn't bite your hands, he'll grab the hook with his mouth. If you put your hand over the glass, he will lunge at the glass and try to bite your hand. He is very food aggressive and they have very strong jaws because in the wild, Jewel Lacertas like to eat snails. And if they can crack a snail shell with their mouth, it's going to feel really not great on your thumb if he gets a hold of your hand. So there you go. That's Jeweled Lacerda Care. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please consider hitting subscribe. I really love the support. Once we get to 100 subscribers, I'll start uploading two videos a week. If you, there's something that you want me to talk about, some video that you think that I should cover, put it down in the description. And if I know what I'm talking about, we'll do that video next week. So thank you very much. Wiccans, Wicked Reptiles, and I'll see you next Monday. Oh,